गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन हेलो हेलो एवरी वन हेलो वेरी गुड इवनिंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू हाई दिस इज वैशाली कामदार फ्रॉम स्पार्क अकेडमी आई होप यू कैन ह्योर माई वॉइस इफ यू कैन ह्योर माई वॉइस कैन आई हैव सम क्विक कॉमेंट्स प्लीज please can i have some quick comments if you can hear my voice clearly so that we can start our class uh good evening all of you this is vaishali kamda from spark academy and uh today we uh we are going to discuss about morphology of flowering plants okay we have uh, discussed few points about plant physiology um last week we didn't meet because i mean because of some changes because of some uh, uh, so after a long time we are meeting again so i hope you can join all of you are joining on time and those who are not joining those you uh, inform your friends that ma'am is live now join morphology of flowering join for morphology of flowering plants okay we will be discussing previous year mcqs with solutions today and concept tips and tricks will be given by me so next 55 minutes next 55 minutes if you are with me concentrating then i am damn sure that you will be clearing all your doubts about morphology of flowering plants and all i mean you can solve um, uh, in the neat exam also all your uh, uh, concept should be clear about the morphology hello venkatesh rao good evening good evening everyone thank you so much for your quick comments so before starting before jumping into the topic let me remind you all of you that you can follow us on spark academy online spark academy online dot com and spark academy uh, is there in facebook instagram and telegram so you can follow us on uh, in any of this convenient way so that you can have idea about all our online sessions okay or else you can uh, you can also um, download or you can also subscribe our channel youtube channel so you can have idea about all these things even if you are in instagram then you can follow us on instagram so that all my tricks and tips i'll be sharing in form of reels so our morphology of flowering plants so structural organization in plants and animals it has a very i mean you can say it is important as a neat point of view around 3 4 questions are asked from the uh, from this chapter so 3 4 questions uh, gives you around 12 to 16 marks so this is weightage of this chapter so this is one shot program discussing about the, all the main points about the morphology and flowering plants so come up with your doubts we'll i'll be uh, clearing all your doubts today so before jumping directly into the topic let me remind you that we have a app that is spark academy app you can follow us or you you just download this app from play store a uh, mind i mean uh, uh, concentrate clearly on this logo this is spark academy logo so you can download our app and great after that you can have a great discounts on our all all our co courses right now so after that you will be having free handwritten notes free study materials pyq questions and free mock test available on uh, app so now now we are starting our morphology of flowering plants you know that flowering plants that means angiosperms angiosperms that means uh, we are discussing those plants in which seeds are enclosed inside the fruit okay so ovary is developed into fruit and ovules are your seeds so these type of plants they can they bear flowers and this flower bearing plants they are known as angiosperms or these type of flowers uh, this type of plants are highly advanced or evolved plants recently they are evolved plants so we need to discuss about all these things so you all know that um, for example this is ground 
and below the ground whatever part of the plants whatever part of a tree below the ground so these are this is called root system and above ground that is called shoot system it includes it includes branches leaves and flower formation like this so this is called shoot system and this is called root system Yes, uh, Lucky, I'll come up with your answer. Okay, this is Hari Shankar. Okay, okay. See, root system, mostly roots are divided into two types. So roots are developed. See, if you look at uh, look into the seed, then into the seed there are three i mean there is three main embryo you can look at the embryo plant embryo plant has uh, two main things pumule and radical and this radical will develop into primary root system this will develop into primary roots okay what happens to this primary roots if it is forming tap roots see there are two types of root system tap and fibrous tap and fibrous roots so in case of tap tap root this primary root or this radical is going to form this main root we what what we call primary root or main root but in case of fibrous root this primary root is short lived this is short lived short lived primary lived, uh, root so then this is uh, it is replaced by some secondary type of, I mean, it is replaced by the same type of roots in case of fibrous root. When you look at the structure of fibrous root, there is no main root. They all looks like a same. Okay. So, this type of structure that is fibrous root. But in case of tap root, there is one main root thick and growing uh, towards the ground or towards the gravity. And from that uh, secondary and tertiary root systems, they are it also bears a root uh, here. It is just like this. Okay. So, this is tap root system. So, remember that radical, if it is continue to grow, it will develop tap root system. Okay. If radical, it is continue, continuously, uh, continuously growing, then it is known as tap root system. If it is short lived and it is replaced by same kind of roots, then it will form fibrous root. Okay. And this plumule, this plumule will result into growth of the stem or shoot system. We'll discuss about that. Now, we need to discuss about the different regions present in the root system. So, root has four different type of region. See, this is root cap. root cap so root cap it is just to protect apical region apex a tender root tip okay beyond that root tap uh, there is you can see this is a uh, this is a structure wait a second let me change the ink see here it is the region where region of meristematic activity you can call it as region of meristematic activity that means continuous cell division occurs here so this is region of continuous cell division okay and all the cells are sent upwards to the region of elongation to the region of elongation so now this for example this is a cell and it is continuously dividing to form a new tiny tiny new cells this cell will grow in size okay this growth of the cell in size will occur in this region of elongation and because of that there is lengthening of the root root because of this region of elongation okay after that this grown cell they get mature 
and they will form this region of maturation. They get mature to form region of maturation and only region of maturation, this region bear root here. Epidermal cells of epidermal cells of region of maturation, they form this root here. This question can be asked. Sometimes this has been asked that which uh, region of root is responsible for root hair formation. Then it is root, it is region of maturation, especially epidermal tissue. That means outer layer of the mature region of maturation from the root system is responsible for root hair formation. And one more thing you need to remember here that is one second. So one more thing you need to remember here that is root hair. Root hair. They are unicellular always. They are unicellular. Okay. Root hair they are unicellular and hair like structure present over a shoot or stem you can say that present over stem they are they are multicellular, they are known as trichomes. They are known as trichomes. Okay. Okay, everyone, Venkatesh, and sorry, I forgot your name, Lucky. You deleted that message. So root hair, they are unicellular and uh, stem, uh, hair like structure present over the stem, uh, stem, they are called trichome and they are multicellular. So these are different forms of modification of root that is tap root. Tap root, when tap root is modified, when tap root is going to modify, okay, it can form, see this is for storage, this is for storage, storage root in case of tap. So remember there is one more type of there is one more type of root system that is called uh, adventitious root when uh, uh, i mean rather than the radical any other part of the plant or any other part of the tree is able to uh, uh, form root system then it is known as adventitious root if it is not starting or it originated from radical then it is called adventitious root okay so tap root Storage form of tap root, it can be divided into three types on the basis of their shape. Fusi form root, when swollen in the middle and taper towards the both hand, like in case of radish, mooly. Okay, in that it is swollen at the middle, it is like this, swollen at the middle and taper toward the both hand, then it is known as fusi form root. Then nappy form root. Swollen at the base and suddenly tapered toward the apex, just like turnip and beetroot. Turnip and beetroot, see. Like this, swollen at the base and suddenly tapered. So that is forming beetroot or you can say nappy form root. So this is, these are, stepper, uh, these are modified storage form of food, modified for the storage of food, underground roots, especially underground roots. Conical root, broad at the base and gradually tapering towards the apex, simply just like a carrot. So you can see this is a tap root, main root, which is uh, which is modified for food storage. Then adventitious root for food storage only tuberous root by, without definite shape. Like in case of sweet potato, most, most, most important point to remember, sweet potato, it's a root. It's a, a root modified for food storage, but it is not tap root or fibrous root. It is adventitious root. It is adventitious root. Then fasciculated root, tuberous root in cluster, like in case of asparagus, 
it is tuberous only but it is in clustered form so too many small 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 clusters you can see in case of asparagus then nodulus root swollen at the tip like in case of mango and ginger then moniform uh, roots swollen at the regular interval and annulated roots like ring at the regular inter intervals aerial roots now aerial roots modified for mechanical support roots can be modified hello everyone hello good evening everyone good to see you all of you see a modified see, roots can be modified for uh, three main purposes okay uh, one is for food storage one is for mechanical support and other is for vital function like for photosynthesis or like for respiration so like uh, i mean second type of root aerial root when it is modified for mechanical support so prop roots and stilt roots they are examples of for mechanical support simply in case of banyan tree you observe this type of branch where from where root is starting okay so it is not developed from radical it is not developed from radical that's why it is adventitious and but it is giving mechanical support to the plant that's why it is known as prop roots okay then stilt root stilt root it is starting from the uh, from uh, i mean below the above the ground from the last node from last node so it is starting like this okay it will be developed like this just for mechanical support again so maize sugarcane so grows from the basal node that is stilt root climbing root you can see in case of beetle then modified for vital function like floating root floating root in case of jessia epiphytic roots or you can see this type of roots just to absorb water from orchids i mean orchids they are growing uh, over some other host surfaces over the ground so they need and uh, they need to absorb water from the environment okay so that's why they develop this type of epiphytic uh, epiphytic roots which are, which are also known as velamen velamen okay this is for absorbance of water then assimilate assimilatory roots so green and photosynthetic root so they can carry out photosynthesis that's why they are known as assimilatory roots and parasitic or hostorical root like in case of cascata it is for parasitic purpose okay for uh, absorbance of the food material from the host plant then one more root we need to discuss that is respiratory roots it is for respiration respiration like in case of uh, it, they are also known as nematophores like in mangroves where there are stagnant water more of the stagnant water so water is uh, i mean uh, land is deprived of the oxygen in that case in that case this is ground then root first grow towards the ground and again it will be coming up and it will growing like upward okay so they are these are called nematophore or respiratory roots this is for respiration then we are discussing next point is the stem next point is stem so stem is the ascending part of the axis growing above the soil bearing leaves fruit and flowers it develops from the plumule of embryo so as i have explained you that it will develop from plumule not from radical develop from plumule not from radical of the embryo of the germinating seed stem bears nodes and internodes this is one of the most important point you need to remember when question is asked then how can you uh, identify or how can you differentiate between uh, food storage uh, root and storage stem for example if ginger is given to you then how can you say that ginger is modified stem not root because presence of nodes and internodes is there in case of stem root do not have nodes and internodes 
So region of the stem where leaves are born are called nodes and while internodes are the portion between two nodes. Stem bear buds which may be terminal or axillary. See, these are modified stem type. Okay, underground stem modification like rhizome in case of ginger and turmeric. Tuber in case of potato. Chrome in case of sorry corm in case of colocasia alocasia and amorphophyllus bulb in case of onion see all those examples are important for exam point point of view example based question can be asked bulb formation in case of onion and garlic see garlic and onion they are modified stem also and they are modified leaves also they are included in both the types because this particular part of onion, this particular like this white portion of onion, that is actually reduced stem. That is actually reduced stem. Okay, these are its roots. This bulb formation, it's fleshy, it may be fleshy uh, leaves or inside it there is reduced stem. Then sub aerial stem modification. So, like in that case, runner. So, simply, if it is running like this to uh, along with the ground, okay, running like this along with the ground and again when it is touching from the node region, again new rooting and shooting will start. So, that is runner in case of grasses or auxalis. Sucker. Sucker. And uh, stolen in case of mint. Stolen in case of mint and jasmine uh, and strawberry, where actually this portion of the um, this branch will grow towards, I mean, upward first, then it will again come back and touches to the ground from where it will start rooting. So this type of scale is developed here, and this is called stolen formation. Then offset you can see in case of water hyacinth. Okay, in case of water hyacinth type of plant where actual aquatic plant where this runner type of thing it is thick and there is no distance or small a short distance between two uh, uh two stems started. Okay, so this is called offset. Petiole sometimes uh, swollen and spongy stem is there. So next aerial stem modification, aerial stem modification in that tendril. So stem, this is we are talking about stem tendril. Okay, sometimes leaves also modify to form tendrils or spring-like structure for mechanical support. So this is stem, this is example of stem tendril. You can see the picture of it. Thorn in case of the dura and citrus fruits where a stem is modified to form thorn just to, uh, for protection against, against herbivores protection against herbivores phyloclade phyloclade see i'll be giving i'll be sharing reel today on instagram about this th uh, three uh, similar kind of words phyloclade cladod and cladophil so what is the difference between this three so i'll be sharing the reel after i mean to you will get that reel uh, after eight o'clock or um, by tomorrow so stay tuned and uh, um, follow us on instagram also so phyloclade it is basically modified stem for photosynthesis like in case of opuntia it's a photosynthetic stem so flattened stem which becomes green that is phyloclade like in case of opuntia okay cladod where stem is small, I mean, small part of stem is modified for photosynthesis that is called cladod, like in case of asparagus and rascus. And bulbin, it is uh, present in case of agave. Then leaf, next to leaf, so leaf, this is typical structure of leaf. So leaf apex, leaf margin, leaf may, I mean midrib and lateral veins and this is flat part of leaf, it is called leaf lamina. Then this stick-like structure, it is called petiole. 
okay petiole at the left leaf base there are small reduced leaf like structure present they are called stipule this dandy stick like structure it is called petiole small reduced leaves like structure present at the base they are called stipule and the system okay leaf it is main photosynthetic it is main leaf main function of leaf is for photo it is for photosynthesis so if it is rather than photosynthesis if it is doing some other work then it is called modified function of leaves okay leaves can have two types of venation venation that means arrangement of veins okay this is called venation so venation here venation there are two types of venation reticulate and parallel okay write in your chat box write in your chat box that is reticulate type of venation you can see in which type of trees monocot trees or dicot trees reticulate is present in which type of trees mono monocot or dicot come on quick answers so if this see i'm waiting for your answer okay if venation it is like this net like venation it is like this if it is arranged it is forming a complex net structure it is net like then it is called reticulate venation but you can see here veins are arranged parallel to each other okay they are not forming a net like structure that is called parallel venation then types of leaves leaf may be simple or compound depending upon the incisation of the lamina simple leaf in simple leaf lamina is not divided com completely into distinct leaf layers see this is actually in case of neem this is we call it leaves but actually it's a compound leaf for example from here if lamina is divided like this okay then these three they are called leaflets but this is simple leaf this is simple leaf okay here it is not divided like this into leaflets that's why it is known as simple leaf compound leaf in compound leaf in uh, incis incision of the leaf blade goes down and uh, to the rachis so the leaf is broken up into the number of segments like leaf blades so these leaf blade like things this this is not actually petiole this is called rachis okay where actually this leaf is divided it is segmented into leaflets so this is compound leaf compound leaves are also of two types they are of two types pinnated leaves and palmated leaves so these are feather feather like leaves pinnated leaves they are feather like leaves the segment of the leaf blade is toward the midrib so that the leaflet are borne laterally by the midrib or rachis like in case of neem but in case of palmated it is just like a palm okay it is just like a palm so or you can say it's like a fan having a leaflet which are born at a tip of the petiole born at the tip of the petiole the palmately compound leaves their segments of the leaf extend from the apical margin to the petiole so that the leaflets are articulate to the tip so see they are arranged from the single point and the, you can see they are uh, they are like fingers on a palm so that's why it is known as palmated leaf like in case of silk cotton then modified leaves modified leaves leaves are often modified to perform function other than the photosynthesis so they are converted into tendrils they are converted into spines remember the difference between spines and thorns remember between the uh, difference between spines and thorns that spines are short sort short sort small small they are uh, modified leaves 
while thorns they are modified to, uh, modified stem okay modification for the protection they are actually thorns but modification just to reduce transpiration rate they are spines okay so bulb the fleshy leaves on the onion and garlic store the food so that is also example of see i have told you that garlic and onion you uh, we need to include them both in modified stem and modified leaves then phyllode so in some plants such australia australian acacia the leaves are small and short leaved so leaves are small and short leaved you can see them here see these are so small leaves so in that case petiole petiole in this plants are expanded and become green for food for photosynthesis so this type of arrangement where petiole it is modified where petiole is modified see it is like this this is petiole and over that from that uh, leaves will be started okay so the leaves becomes uh, petiole is becoming green to carry out photosynthesis that is called phyllode then pitcher so pitcher leaves of the certain insectivorous plants such as pitcher plant and venus flytrap are also modified leaves they are modified leaf, modified leaves they are not modified or stem okay remember leaf tendril then these are spines you can see they are like this small and thorn it is like this starting from the stem so the it is modified stem then inflorescence based on the arrangement this is we are discussing inflorescence in fluorescence so based on the arrangement of the floral uh, uh, floral axis in fluorescence they are of two types racemos and cymos racemos in fluorescence in racemos in fluorescence the main axis continues to grow see this is racemos okay where actually what happens this is main axis this will continue to grow okay main axis it is continue to grow and flowers are born literally on acropetal succession which means acropetal succession which, which means the older flower are at the base and younger flower near the apex see how they'll be for example this is a branch where flower is started okay this is a flower this is older flower then again tip will grow it will reach till this point again new flowers will start here like this tip is growing continuously new flower will be born here okay so younger flower at the top uh, and older flower at the bottom so this is called this is called acropetal succession and this type of inflorescence is known as racemos inflorescence while in case of cymos this main axis okay apical bud it is converted it is terminated to the flower so that's why there is no increase in the height of the plant okay and all other flowers see so the older older at the top and all other flowers they'll be starting at the base part of the older flower so that is known as basic petal order so that means older flower at the apex and younger flower are near the base so this type of inflorescence is known as cymos inflorescence then flora flower rolls uh, you can uh, you can uh, you are i hope you are knowing that full flower has two main type of organs accessory organs and reproductive organs calyx and corolla they are not involved actually they are not involved in the reproductive organs So accessory organs, accessory organs. They are calyx and corolla. Members of calyx, they are called sepals and generally green in color, protects the plant in the bud stage. And corolla members are called petals and they are brightly colored. They are attracted, uh, attract insect for pollination. Then gamosepalus. 
and polysepalus if sepals are united then it is known as gamosepalus hello everyone i hope you are listening to me i can't see your chat guys if you are there please yeah you it's there am i audible bhavna am i audible okay see if sepals or petals whatever it may be if they are united if they are touching to each other and they are uh, united then they are known as gamosepalus or gamopetalus but if they are separated separated then they are known as polysepalus or polypetalus okay then a reproductive organs they are androecium and gynoecium androecium is male and gynoecium is female so this is symmetry of a flower we need to discuss symmetry of flower symmetry of flower <clears throat> so symmetry can be of three types actinomorphic zygomorphic and asymmetric this is asymmetric okay symmetric can be see if a uh, actinomorphic type of symmetry is like that you can divide flower into equal half only one condition is that that you need to pass the axis from the center if it is passing from the center and if you can divide it properly into equal half okay at any axis you can try okay just you need to pass it from the center then you can divide flower into two equal halves so that is called actinomorphic flower actinomorphic symmetry actinomorphic symmetry then zygomorphic in that condition in that type of symmetry you can divide it into equal half only when you are divided it into vertical vertical plane okay so if you can divide it from the vertical plane then only you can uh you can uh divide it pro uh, properly into two equal halves so that is zygomorphic symmetry see i'm writing here see this is called zygomorphic when you can divide it from only and only into two equal halves only when you can divide into vertical plane so that is just like us okay just like us you can divide uh, our body into two equal halves only if you divide like that uh, in a vertical plane otherwise you can't divide into two equal half if you are dividing like this okay so that will be different that is called zygomorphic symmetry and simply you can't divide them uh, uh, in any plane if you are doing Now you can't divide it into equal half. Then it is known. They are known as asymmetric flower. Then on the basis of presence of calyx corolla and androecium gynoecium or ovary, uh, there are three types of flowers: hypogynous flower, or it is also known as superior ovary. In this <coughs> superior ovary, this is superior ovary. Ovary is superior. ovary is superior here okay see i don't have that picture but for example ovary is here and all other part of the plants like calyx and corolla it is starting from uh, at the bottom of the plant okay ovary is here so it is like this this is superior ovary and this ovary occupies the highest position of the thalamus while the floral parts are situated below it then perigynous flower so half inferior ovary you can see here it is half inferior 
at the half portion of the ovary all the parts of the plants like calyx i uh, all the part of the flower like calyx and corolla they are started so in this ovary is situated at the center and the other floral parts arrange on the rim of the thalamus so the ovary here is said to be half inferior then epigynous inferior ovary ovary is completely inferior and all other parts they are starting from the upper part of it so all other floral parts they are present above the ovary hence this ovary is said to be inferior ovary <clears throat> next it is about fruits fruits so it is a matured or ripened ovary developed after fertilization fruit formed without fertilization of ovary are called parthenocarpic fruit if it is without fertilization then it is known as parthenocarpic fruit generally a fruit consists of two parts pericarp and seeds okay seed is the only living part of the fruit so this is a seed and other part of the fruit it is known as pericarp again this pericarp it is divided into uh, three layers so fleshy pericarp further divided into three parts outer epicarp outermost it is epicarp middle mesocarp and inner endocarp the mango and coconut the fruit is they are known as drupe because drupe develop from the monocarpillary superior ovaries and in mangoes the pericarp is differentiated into outer thin epicarp and middle fleshy edible mesocarp inner stony hard endocarp and in coconut the mesocarp is rep represented by fibrous part what we can see outer side brown color fibrous part that is actually mesocarp in case of coconut what we are eating it is endocarp edible part it is endocarp but in mango a middle fleshy edible mesocarp we are we are eating mesocarp then seeds they are divided into two types monocot seed and dicot seed uh, based on the presence of single cotyledons and dicotyledon uh, monocot versus dicot in case of especially in case of monocot seed you can see um, uh, alluron layer or you can see endosperm here so endosperm is present in most of the monocot seed while in case of dicot seed this endosperm it has been used okay and in case of dicot seed the outer thick layer okay seed coat has two layers outer testa and inner one is known as tegmen so it is divided into two layers testa and tegmen outermost testa and inner it is tegmen okay a uh, seed for example this is seed i'm drawing a seed for example this is a seed then this is this is coil this is called hilum here it is called hilum and this pore like structure it is called micropyle in case of monocot seed you can observe this uh, i mean endosperm and the cotyledons they are separated by this alluron layer which is made up of proteins which is made up of protein and radical it is it is stored or you can say radical it is protected inside coleoriza and pumule is protected inside the coleoptile so coleoriza and coleoptile you can see uh, see in case of monocot root monocot seed and in case of monocot seed um, uh, this cotyledon it is also known as cutellum again i am reminding all of you that you can visit to spark store 
which uh, link is given in the description box also you can visit our spark store and you can purchase or buy anything like uh, long term courses crash course mock test previous year solutions full length test and study materials so you can buy anything from the spark store and link is given in the description box admissions are open you can join right now hostel focus study hours and classroom coaching offline coaching offline classes are uh, also going on see uh, i know till 38 it is paused it is on pause you can say because of info, uh, i mean government uh, uh, government has been uh, i mean stop this on offline classes right now so it has been paused you can say it is not completely off so offline classes are also going on long term coaching is going on timings are 10 to 4 and regular coaching timings are 6 to 9 pm we have our two branches narayan gura and mehndi patnam you can join any branch which is convenient to you admissions are open for online coaching also like need 2022 online coaching uh, then j e mains online coaching and m set online coaching on daily basis on demand the live sessions are going on even i am taking live class uh, in, on daily basis okay so you will be having a recorded form of this live classes in your app afterwards whenever you want to uh, whenever you want to watch any of the video you can watch afterwards also so that is one convenient way we are providing through app so which is very convenient if you can't join at the time if you are sick or if you are unwell then you can join uh, you can uh, check the video check that class you will not miss any of the class so this is how on daily basis we are giving assignments and we are checking that assignments whether you are doing it properly or not if you have any doubt in assignments we are there to solve all your doubts on daily on weekend basis we are taking uh, we can test also and this is how we are estimate or uh, we are uh, um, i mean on uh, uh, this test estimation is also done our methodology is basic concept theorems and shortcut methods are also given all model questions exercise questions pyqs chapter wise tests weekend test grand test and test analysis is also has been done now question time question time all of you be prepared for the question time i'm waiting all of you for all your answer are you all there bhavna and venkatesh and lucky so first question you can see in your screen first question you can see on your screen yes bhavna and lucky and venkatesh and those others who have joined please answer for the first question in china rose the flower are china rose the flower are actinomorphic epigynous with velvet estivation zygomorphic hypogynous with imbricate estivation zygomorphic epigynous with twisted estivation and actinomorphic hypogynous with twisted estivation see estivation i need to explain over here what is actually estivation it is you can say one second yeah See, estivation it is more of arrangement of sepals or petals what is estivation it is arrangement of petals and sepals petals and sepals for example if they are like this okay 
one by one after another if like this if they are arranged like this one after another then this type of oxidation is known as velvet this is called velvet but if they are arranged like this one overlapping other overlapping other overlapping other and like this again overlapping okay this type of oxidation is called twisted properly twisted properly one end of the petal or sepal it is uh, outside and the other is inside again one is outside other is inside outside inside outside inside like that properly twisted properly twisted that is known as twisted astivation but if it is not properly twisted and one is completely outside one is completely inside and other are twisted like this then this type of astivation it is known as imbricate imbricate astivation and lastly in case of vexillary astivation it is like this one leaf it is complete it is big and large inside that there are two more petals inside that there are two more petals so they are joined together okay like this so this is called vexillary astivation in which when in which the outermost outermost sepal it is known as standard this is called standard inside one two they are they are known as wings and inside that there are two small petals present that is they are known as keels so this is arrangement of petals and sepals that is known as astivation okay so now first question it is in china rose the fl flower are of which type in china rose the flower they are of correct answer here actinomorphic hypogynous with twisted astivation actinomorphic hypogynous with twisted astivation okay now among the bitter gourd mustard brinjal pumpkin china rose lupin cucumber sanhap gram guava bean chili plum petunia tomato rose vidinia potato onion aloe and tulip how many plants have hypogynous flower how many of these have hypogynous flower then answer is answer is mustard has a hypogynous brinjal has a hypogynous then china rose has a hypogynous okay then lupine has a hypogynous it is lupine has a, so it is leguminosae family then gram has hypogynous then bean also hypogynous then petunia petunia then potato 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 tomato also onion aloe tulip all of these they are hypogynous flower by bitter gourd cucumber guava only bitter gourd cucumber and guava have epigynous flowers and rose has perigynous flower okay rose has perigyne this rose has perigynous flower so this means how many are there 2 3 4 5 um, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 so you can say around 15 it is around 15 then next question among the flower of 
coleotropis tulip and how many of them uh, how many of these plants have corolla with velvet astivation corolla that means sepals with velvet astivation answer is answer is 7 answer is 7 they have velvet astivation then phyllotaxy see how many of the plant among the china rose have the opposite type of phyllotaxy see phyllotaxy that means again i need to explain that phyllotaxy okay Phyllotaxy that means arrangement of leaves over the over the main axis. Okay, if it is like this, one second here, third here, fourth here, then it is known as alternate. Okay, if it is like this, then it is called opposite. But if it is at one point, all more than two leaves are present, then it is called rolled. So which type? of present in this uh, all of these so for fourth question answer is I, I mean how many of them have opposite type that means this type so it is answer is answer is this ocean then guava and calotropis three of them have uh, opposite type of phyllotaxy in cymos and fluorescence main axis terminates in flower main axis terminates in flower which is correct answer here correct answer is terminates in flower that is correct answer that is a in fluorescence in racemos in in fluorescence in racemos it, is racemos in which type this racemos in soya bean then placenta and pericarp are both edible portion placenta and pericarp both of them are edible in case of tomato when the margin of the sepals and petals overlap one another without any particular direction the condition is termed as the condition is termed as imbricate Okay, you can also join us on Telegram, uh, Telegram Spark Academy, uh, Academy Telegram. Uh, you can join us. Telegram link is also given in the chat in the description box. This is the results uh, of 2021. MSET results of 2021. Spark Academy NEET results of 2021. then these are your homework questions so you can note down all your homework questions in a serial grain the single squatty laden of the embryo is represented by what which type of a function is performed by the fleshy leaves of the onion and garlic long filamentous thread protruding at the end of the young cope of the uh, maize they are what they are what they are styles ovary hairs or anthers pineapple fruit develops from what Pineapple, it's which type of fruit? It is composite fruit. So it is developed from what? Then pentameris actinomorphic flower by carpillary ovary with oblique septa and fruit a capsule of the berry are characteristic feature of what? I'm waiting for all your answers in uh, this, uh, in comment section. Please answer all the questions in comment section. I'll be waiting for the answers and I'll be giving you correct answers and comment section subscribe if you like the video subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon and press uh, for the notification so you will not miss out any of the important lecture so um, uh, just go on to the youtube and subscribe spark academy channel and press the bell icon so you will not miss out all our important lectures live classes Thank you so much and don't forget to la like, share and comment. I'm waiting for all your answers in comment section. Thank you so much all of you.